Hey everyone, it's me again, Spencer, back with another sketch day. Like I said, I'm doing this every day from Monday through Thursday. And yesterday on Monday, we covered a little bit about cylinders and how to show lighting using a simple pencil for our shading. Today, we're going to actually take a look at a real product, the Amazon Echo. Very, very simple product that lives in your home. And just show you how I'd go about conceptually sketching something similar to that. Can't promise that it'll be exactly the same, of course. But uh, I'll just show you how I would go about doing that in a three-quarter view of the product. So let's get into it. So as always, I like to work light till I get it right. And to do that, I'm going to use a Prismacolor Very Thin Pencil. It's similar to the Prismacolor Premier Pencil, um, but the wax content of the tip is a little bit different. And the size of that lead, as you can see on the Very Thin, as the name implies, is very thin. On the Premier, it's a lot fatter and bolder of a tip. So I go between them, just depending on what I'm sketching. However, for today, since we're sketching something tall and cylindrical, I'm actually going to rotate my page here and zoom out. So now you can see more of my messy table. But uh, <clears throat> let's go ahead and sketch a cylinder. To do that, I'm going to, down the middle of my page, sketch a nice central axis, okay, really lightly. and a top ellipse and an ellipse on the bottom and just connect those sides like so and there we have a very rough outline of our product now if you want you can check using something like your iPhone here I've got a picture of the echo up just to check proportion not the shading per se because we can do whatever we want in any case um, just looking at the proportion it looks like it's split kind of in the middle with the holes where those speaker holes are so I'm just gonna sketch in a very light line there and at the bottom as well I'm trying to pay attention to how open the cylinder is so remember we've got our minor axis here on the bottom that's a little bit taller than the minor axis on the cylinders on the top. There's also a line on the top where this volume control resides as well as a line indicating the light. Okay, There's a light on top of this thing and two control buttons as well I think for volume and microphone capability. So again, very very simple product. Now, I could take my time and draw all of these speaker holes, but I'm not going to do that for this demo. We're going to focus on the shading of the cylinder and some of those part breaks. So instead of doing a perforation pattern on this lower section, I'm going to switch my material to something that's a little easier to manage, something like a speaker cloth, something that's acoustically transparent. And I can, I can mimic that texture using my markers fairly simply. So. What I need to do is lay down some, some uh, ground rules for myself. So if you need to on the side, you can sketch a little cylinder here and just think about, okay, I'm looking at my cylinder here and if I light it from the front and the left, I'll get a shadow core and a highlight. And perhaps if there's some secondary light source, I'll get a little bit of a shadow core past the highlight and a little bit of a highlight on this edge. So that's where that secondary highlight came from in our example number one here. Okay, so that being said, as I shade this, I just need to pay attention to highlight and shadow core. And if my shadow core is to the right, that means I'm gonna have a shadow going off this way. So lightly sketch that in. And I'm just gonna plan for a background here in my sketch by lightly sketching that in as well. Something like that, really light. Now instead of starting with a 30% gray, because this is a pretty dark product, I'm actually going to start with a 70% gray Copic marker. And it's indicated by the letters on the top C7, if you have your Copic markers handy, or any marker, it's about a 70% gray. Now, if you're struggling getting long straight lines while sketching, 
you probably need to learn to draw with your shoulder. Okay, so drawing with your shoulder is all about using your shoulder here as a pivot and your elbow as well. So that when I draw a straight line, I'm actually drawing it like this instead of using my wrist to try and draw that line. Okay, so when I say draw with your shoulder, I mean use your shoulder as a pivot. And I've got my elbow as a pivot, but my wrist is really locked as I'm drawing. So continuing, I can come on this other side. That one was a little bit off. Took my eyes off there for a sec. And you can go right to left or left to right, however you want. But basically just filling in all of this with marker. And the reason again for, for this is that the Echo or a similar product has a texture to that surface. In the case of the Echo, it looks like it's an anodized aluminum product. So there's a little bit of texturing that happens. So what I'm doing here now is as my marker is dried, I'm coming over and just pushing a little bit of a shadow core and also just blending out some of these extra bands in my marker work as I go. The trick with marker is not to be too slow as you shade, but rather be somewhat quick and deliberate. There's my secondary shadow core. And I'm gonna get darker on this through the middle so I can go ahead and blend closer to my shadow core with that 70%. I may even take a step back to my 50%, which I haven't used, just to blend in this little area of highlight. Okay, so once I'm to this point here, where I've got a nice highlight and shadow core, I'm going to jump in value to a 9 to push that shadow core even more, okay? If you're ever wondering about contrast and how much to put, it's mostly a matter of practice, but what you can do is you can actually either squint your eyes or take a step back from your work. And if the form is reading really well, like you can identify, I'm squinting my eyes right now, something like this. And if you squint your eyes and look at your work and you can't really tell the shadow core from the highlight, then you probably need to push your contrast a little bit more. So this is what I was talking about, just saving that 50% gray, just for a little blending on that highlight area. And I'm going to push this shadow core a little bit more. Because it is a textured surface, it's going to diffuse that light just a little bit. Now you can see those little, very light pencil lines that I had sketched in before have pretty much gone away. Okay, so top to bottom, got a highlight area and shadow core to the left. Now there is a little bit of a light ring on the top of this and I kind of forgot about it, I'll be honest. So I'm going to cheat a little bit here. And just shade in the top of my Echo-like product, like so. And then just take this nice blue marker. Let's Make a little test mark here just to make sure. That looks like a good blue. And I'm blending toward my highlight because I want to show that even this part of the product is cylindrical, right? And has form to it. So just blending toward that point. Okay, so that little, little bit of white that I left there that's a little bit of highlight in this section. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a white pencil and just very lightly just try and, and rediscover those part lines that I 
I uh, shaded over, okay? So there's one, and we had one in the middle as well. And toward the bottom. Okay, now because this is a different material, what I'm gonna do is use a nice dark marker. I could go black, but I'll use my C9 instead. And rather than shading in a straight line, I'm just gonna create a random pattern with my marker, like so. And if I'm lucky, this should give me a nice textured look to kind of work with. And that's just achieved by the random application in terms of direction of the marker. Okay, it's very quick, very random. But again, that'll kind of give me a base for my simulated material around the middle here. Okay, again, it's a little bit different, but that's all right. This is our version. We're just having fun here. Okay, so next is, now that I have this little white line, I'm going to add a dark line right above that white line, okay? And that's going to help me simulate a break in my part or my surface. Now, if you're not sure about the reason for that, you can watch any of my videos that talk about shadows, um, or if you're lucky, I've talked about it in another video. But essentially, it has to do with the fact that even though these two surfaces are touching, there is a little bit of a gap between those two parts. And that gap is casting a shadow on the lower part of, uh, of this product. So if you don't have a ruler and you want to get these nice straight sides, you can always take another pad of paper here and just sketch in a nice straight line. That's going to help bring things together a little bit as we sketch. And like I've said before, it's okay to have tools and to use tools, but you don't want to really depend on those tools, okay? So they're a great way to just add a little bit of structure to your sketch, but you don't want to be in a position where you can't, you know, just freehand or, or sketch on your own. Because then you're, you're kind of dependent on that and it limits your flexibility. So same thing here on the top. Dark line. And I'll come in with my pencil, especially on these highlight spots, right in the region of highlight, because that's the direction of my light source. I'm just going to kind of hit that a little bit more than the rest and blend outward from that point. Okay, same thing on the bottom here. Outward from that point. Now to get a nice texture on the bottom, since this is a, a dark fill, I can stipple with both my black and my white pencil with the white pencil, I'm concentrating my stippling toward this region right in here. So from about here to there, which is where my highlight would be, okay, on this surface. So essentially I'm, I'm concentrating these dots by reducing the distance between the dots. And as I move away and around, I'll add less and less. Okay, however, if I want, because this is a, a medium dark part, and you may not be able to see this on camera very well, but it is giving another element of depth to this section. Next thing I can do with this pencil, now I'm using a Prismacolor Premier, just by flipping it on the side, I can kind of shade in this textured section and the pencil is going to pick up the texture of the paper and give it further depth and dimension, which is kind of cool, right? So we applied some marker, some white pencil, and now some black pencil. In this case, for my secondary shadow core, 
and I've got my primary shadow core right through there. And on the opposite of my primary shadow core, or on the other side rather, I may have just a little bit of a highlight. And I'm going to add that just with a little bit of white pencil on that side. And we can push our primary shadow core, or sorry, our primary highlight rather, just a little bit more with a little bit of that white pencil. So having a white pencil handy is, is really nice because I'm able to kind of manipulate my highlights as need be. Now if you want to, oh, forgot my buttons on the top. Can't forget those. So just a little dark shadow against this top. That's going to help show that there's buttons there. And then on the opposite side of that shadow, just a little bit of a line to show that it's catching light. It exists. It's there. We're saying, we see you. I see you. Okay. So next step is if you want to just kind of accentuate those highlights a little bit, you can do something using gouache, which is artist paint. Um, in my case, I'm using a tube of white gouache and a number two Windsor Regency gold brush. I've had this brush for many years. And this is going to seem really weird, but if you don't have water with you, like in a little cup or whatever, you can actually just stick the brush in your mouth. Like I said, a little bit weird. But what it does is it keeps those fibers together enough so that you can get a nice, accurate point um, for applying this stuff. And because I haven't used this tube in a while, it's probably a little bit weird at the top, so I'm just going to stir this. Maybe you can see this on camera here. So just stir this in my brush, or in my tube rather. And now that I have some on the tip, I can add just a little gouache, okay, on these areas that would have a little bit of a highlight. It's a nice little touch, but it gives your eyes a little bit of a focal point as you're looking at the rendering overall. So the last thing I'm going to do is just kind of fill out my shadow and my background here. Okay, I'm going to set my brush here to the side and have to finish a little quickly so that uh, my brush doesn't dry out. But for the background, which I'll start with, and it's okay to experiment. Here I'm experimenting with not really adding a shadow, but rather indicating where the shadow would be like so, and then having that turn into the background. And it's okay to try things even if they don't work out. I'm not entirely sure that this will work out to my liking. But just by creating an outline, it guides my eyes a little bit as I apply my marker and concentrating my marker strokes when I'm closest to the object, will create a sense of depth on the page. I can even switch to, in this case, a yellow red nine, and right next to the cylinder here. Just hit that. And on the other side. And that's what's called a depth cue, okay? so. For example, in real life, when we see an object that's in front of another object, there's a shadow that's cast, assuming there's a light coming toward that object. And by just showing a little bit of shadow on this surface that's behind the primary surface, it's going to give me an impression that this really is in front. So even in a two-dimensional media, we're able to communicate some serious depth. So that's how I'd go about tackling something like the Amazon Echo or a cylindrical speaker. We've looked at our shadow cores, highlights, some texture, color accent as well. And of course, you can continue to add details to this if you want. I'm not going to draw the Amazon logo, but let's say there's some indication of it there at the bottom. You can totally do that as well. Nothing wrong with that. And again, you know, just kind of experiment and see what works for you and what doesn't. Well, thanks for watching again. It's been really fun. 
I love sketching, I love sharing what I do. And with your help, I think we can make this a lot bigger thing. So what I'd like you to do is if you take a minute and just subscribe to my channel, it'll give you an opportunity to be the first to know when I post a video. So every time I post a video, every day this week, you will get an email that says, hey, Spencer just posted a video or Sketch a Day posted something new. And that way, you'll be the first. You can watch the video, practice, and uh, learn all you gotta learn. If you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is at sketchaday, D-O-T-C-O-M. Um, just follow that and you'll see other sketches that I post. Or if you prefer, you can engage with me on Facebook and facebook.com slash sketchaday. So those are the three ways I'd like you to uh, reach out if you feel like you, you want to or, um, you know, see the videos before anyone else does. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow.